just going to unslag them about being negative. And now he's said, why is Batty not being picked ahead of Beckham? It should be even more negative. Yeah, I'll be talking. Yeah, I'm hearing shitty, Andy. Tell Roy's not to talk. <laughs> the injury is very good Richard and it's cleared up so quickly that I almost made the team for this morning's game between the press of, of England and the press of Moldova suffice to say the lads didn't need me and they won the game comfortably 6 goals to 3 Yes, I am. I'm a little bit confused when you hear people say he's been a little bit negative with the selection of Gary Neville and Andy Hinchcliffe. Uh, everyone should remember that Gary Neville played in the European Championships for every game on that right side. And what he has done, he's substituted Steve McManaman, who's not here, with David Beckham, another young lad who's extremely fit, who's extremely talented, and who's on good form at the moment. Obviously, on the other side with Darren Anderton's injury, he can't pick him. He's gone for a natural left-sided player in Andy Hinchcliffe, and I think that's positive. I'm absolutely delighted, from a neutral's point of view, I might add, that he's gone for David Beckham as opposed to David Batty. Now, I think that might have been a little bit more negative than people realise. Batty's not as attack-minded as young Beckham, and I think with Paul Ince in the holding role that he will undoubtedly have this afternoon, it will allow David Beckham and Paul Gascoigne to go and impose themselves on the Moldovans. It's... Not as good as it looks, Richard. I have to say, the pictures will probably show a lovely grassy surface. It's a little bit too long for my liking. It was very long yesterday for the under-21s. It's been shaved. I wouldn't say cut this after this morning. It's been shaved, but it's a little, little bit long. But talking to Glenn this morning, he's very, very happy about that. He was worried they were actually going to cut it right down, which would made the pitch, which is hard underneath, very bobbly. So he's happy that the ball should run over the surface quite smoothly. I'm just a little bit concerned, particularly defensively. Defenders trying to play the ball out from the back. At times last night in the under-21 game, people were tripping over the ball because it was sticking in the grass. OK, Richard.
program we want to move in. It's a wonderful competition without England taking part and it just shows how important today is. Yeah, I think so, particularly for England, Martin, who for, for two years basically didn't have any qualification games. They were already assured of their place in Euro 96. It was friendly after friendly. Suddenly, this is back to the real world. This is coming to places like Moldova and Georgia, where they'll have to go and picking up valuable wins to make sure that they're in France. We've just uh, come back from the tunnel over the far side there, and just standing there as the two teams came out for their first look at the pitch today, an advantage for England was apparent straight away. Yeah, I, I was amazed at that. I was going to say the height, but I should say the lack of height in the Moldovan squad. As each one went out, I kind of stood beside them all and I thought, I tell you what, even I at my age would fancy my chances at anything flying across the, the box at any time. And I was, I wondered, and that's what we were talking about it in the last couple of days over here, as to whether, with Teddy Sheringham being out the side, whether they would opt for the aerial power of Les Ferdinand. Obviously they didn't, they opted for Nick Bambi, but if England are struggling, and there's still that obvious lack of height, perhaps there'll be a place for Les at some time in the match. Richard, we've got a referee from Finland who's a test pilot. Let's hope it's a good takeoff for England here today.